In this video, I wanted to share my scratch built stand up upright arcade cabinet. Uh, it's two player. It is uh, fully custom built out of three quarter inch MDF and it's running a 20 inch uh, CRT television powered by a Raspberry Pi 3B Plus running RGB Pi OS. Before we get into the construction of the cabinet, let's go ahead and address the elephant in the room, which is, I think, the color scheme for this. Uh, it's a kind of candy pink with a seafoam blue. Um, it's definitely playing off of like a retro vaporwave kind of vibe. I wanted this uh, to be eye-catching. I wanted it to ev evoke um, a, a very retro feeling when you look at it, and I wanted it to be that kind of arcade game that if you saw this, sitting in the back of a 7-Eleven when you were 12 years old on a road trip, you would just be drawn to it from across the room. The exterior panels of the cabinet were cut out of three quarter inch MDF. Once I was happy with the layout and design of one side and the pattern, I laid it down on a, another full sheet and then traced it using a, a trace router bit. You can actually see that over here. Here's an extra panel I made in case I ever wanted to use this as a template for something else again. Um, but you can see it's just the shape of one of those sides, rounded and cut with a router bit and then also channeled for the T-molding. Had a little bit of a problem here. Before starting this project, I did a lot of research on different cabinet designs, different uh, sizes and scales, and also based on the depth that I needed to fit this 20 inch uh, CRT monitor inside of. Um, but as you can see here for the exterior design, I carried the paint scheme over across the front apron and control panel uh, down the front and fully over to the other side as well so it's mirrored. Also on the marquee, uh, this was uh, spray painted to get that faded color over top of some vinyl graphics for the lettering on top of um, frosted plexiglass. So these letters you'll see in a second when I turn on the marquee are actually um, transparent. Here's the cabinet powered. The marquee is lit and the screen is on. Playing Miss Pac-Man. You can see the marquee letters are a little bit angle dependent because the light source behind them right now is pretty small and dim. I think putting a brighter, wider fluorescent tube inside there will help those display evenly. But it does give a nice effect from back a little further. Uh, piece of cut plexiglass for the screen cover protector four inch subwoofers. There's an amplifier um, mounted to the top just so you can reach up there and adjust the volume quickly if you need to. Coin, player one. I have to say I really love using the CRT for a setup like this. Uh, the curvature of the glass, uh, the scan lines it produces, um, the depth that sits kind of away back behind the screen, all give it a, a feeling of a, a real arcade and that's kind of what I was going for here is just really, really making it feel like you're in an arcade since none of us can really go to arcades right now. As far as system power goes on this, there's nothing fancy. I actually leave the Raspberry Pi on 24 seven and it goes into sleep mode or screensaver mode for the software that it's running. But the only button I have to kind of power it on and off is on top of the cabinet up here. And I just use an extra arcade button I had 
and pushing that actually is wired to the television itself. So that's just triggering the power button on the TV set to get it to turn on and off. With everything powered down now, I'll show you some of the internals. Uh, with the front apron here, we have two, two coin buttons and player one, player two buttons, along with the six button setup for player one and player two up here. Um, I went with the all white buttons, uh, all white joystick knobs, all white accents to match the T molding and offset everything from the, the pink and blue vibe. Um, this entire uh, control panel and apron here is actually mounted on a piano hinge. So at any point in time, if you need to, you can pop this open and have access to any of your controls. And there you can kind of see a little bit behind the curtain, just a television resting on a platform. There's not a lot else to say about the cabinet build itself. I'll show you some internals in a second, but really um, it was very labor intensive working with the MDF, um, especially using a router. It turns the MDF into a wood dust that is very easy to inhale and goes everywhere. So by the end of this project, you could not even see my garage floor because it was covered in this dust. And so was I, and so were my lungs. I wore a respirator. Um, but I felt even so still it was getting in. So just keep in mind, you know, it for some people it may be worth just buying a pre-built like arcade one up and modifying it if you really want to go custom with something like this. Um, but also building building one yourself is very satisfying. So definitely don't let the MDF scare you off. Um, it is very heavy, but I think with the proper respirator and you know caution it can be a great project. So with the cabinet turned around now, we can see some of the internals, the 20 inch Dynex television. It was a TV DVD combo at one point, uh, still is, still actually works. I've had it for about, I don't know, 20, 25 years, it feels like. Um, you can see how the speakers are mounted from the outside in up there with four inch hole screwed. And then you can also see the backside of the free play marquee, which is transparent. I actually posted on the inside of the cabinet some of the designs that I found on the internet, um, layouts for where buttons go, stuff like that, just kind of as a record of how this thing was put together. So you'll see that in some of the video. You can see here, this is uh, the controller layout that I printed to scale. So I could lay this on the um, top side of the control deck mark where the center of the holes were and then drill them. You can see here, this is uh, a very detailed measurement guide. And I think this is supposed to be a joust cabinet replica. But what you can see I did differently with mine is that here, some of the angles around the top of the marquee are very um, squared off and sharp, where I took um, an extra step to round all my corners. So all those edges of the side panels feel soft. And this is actually a mock-up design I did in Photoshop um, after I had the cabinet built to test uh, different design patterns and how they were gonna lay out across the front surface. At one point I was even undecided about what the font I wanted to use across the marquee was. Um, so I actually had an extra set of vinyl graphics just in case I didn't like the way one of them turned out. But I ended up going with the blockier, larger spaced um, letters. It just felt like it fit the cabinet design a little bit better. 
The great thing about this television is that, is that it has component video input, which is remarkably better than composite, the standard yellow video input we find on all our devices here in the United States. So that kind of dictated the um, Raspberry Pi and software setup I was gonna run. The RGB Pi software is designed specifically for CRT television and retro gaming. It outputs a true 240p signal via its GPIO cable to SCART connector. SCART is a European television standard that we don't have in the States. It's close to what our component video um, gives us, but I think it's an even purer RGB signal um, out of devices into televisions. You can see here I'm going from GPIO out of the Raspberry Pi to SCART to a little box that's a little hard to see here um, from the company RetroTINK, but that converts SCART to component and also splits out the audio. So the audio cables run down here and all the way up to the amplifier up top and the component video goes um, shortest line I could come up with to the television so there'd be minimal interference. It's going to be very difficult to capture this with the um, shutter speed of my camera I'm using but the video quality output from the RGB <coughs> video quality output from the RGB Pi software and SCART cable is really amazing. Um, all of the games look just super fantastic and better than they ever did on my SNES with uh, composite video. Got me. So that's sort of it for this build. Um, I had a lot of fun making this thing and designing the look of the cabinet and getting all of the electronics to work. Uh, this is my first arcade project I've ever done. And I hope to do more, maybe on a smaller scale. Uh, you can see I pushed it back into place. It kind of lives over here in the corner, so it's out of the way a little bit more. And it's on two, two and a half inch caster wheels. So it makes it a little easier to move around because all said and done, this thing probably weighs 400 pounds. Um, it's really, really heavy. Well, thanks for watching this video. If you have any questions, uh, ask me down in the comments. I feel like I've got a lot of knowledge doing, from doing this project and doing a custom one uh, arcade one-up cabinet too. Um, so if I can help in any way with people's bills, just let me know. Um, in the future, I'll try to get better about taking videos while I do these projects from here on out. But for now, uh, the kind of slideshow process is going to have to work. But thank you.